Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Happy Thursday. Got another week. I'm playing golf. I can't complain, so it's been all good for me. Uh, before we get into today's episode, I want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist and the brand new Pro V1 and Pro V1X golf balls. So, to be your best today, you have to outperform the player you were yesterday. For some, it might be breaking 80. For others, it might be breaking the course record. Or And for all of us, it's playing a golf ball we know will help us get the most out of our game. The new Pro V1, Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X are the most advanced to date and will help reward your best swings like never before. Both models are longer, even more consistent, and feature unrivaled control. Pro V1 is the best combination of distance, spin, and feel in the game and delivers a penetrating ball flight. Pro V1X, the ball I play, flies higher and spins more in the short game, while still giving you low spin on longer shots to mac- maximize your distance. Find out more about the new Pro V1 and Pro V1X, including which is be- the best choice for your game at Titleist.com. Yeah, I played the Pro V1X uh, all uh, last week, and I like it. I mean, it's the new one, and I know people always ask, you know, compare it you know, between last year's and this year's, and, and honestly, I think this one's a little bit softer. I think it's just got a little softer feel, a little more, a little quieter uh, with, the, with the putter, with the wedges, and uh, but still gets that you know, ball up in the air. And uh, it stops on the green. So, yeah, last week, first week of the league, it's done. It's in the books, and it was a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> it was, uh, it was a rough one. I mean, it, it was kind of like the purgatory round. I didn't play terrible. I hit the ball decent. I just couldn't make any putts. I couldn't wedge it or iron it close. And yeah, I just ended up. Uh, I never had a blow pole or anything. I just you know basically played bogey golf other than a couple holes. And ended up with a, uh, a 41, which is uh, a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping to play better than that, and uh, I kind of felt better. But that is the first I've played since January 2nd uh, was the, the last time I played golf. So it's uh, it's hard to say that I have a lot of a lot of swings under my belt. I mean, I've been going to the dome, going to the range, all that. But it is different. I mean, you, you can hit you know wedges and things like that off turf, and it's way different than hitting them off, uh, off real grass and having real lies and things like that. So... A little different, but uh, it was great to get out there. It was, it was fun. Uh, all the guys were there. I mean, it was a beautiful day last Thursday here. Uh, here, I think we were missing two guys. Uh, one, uh, one guy, he's, he's in Florida for most of the year, and him and his wife haven't come back yet, so he always misses like the first week or two. Uh, and then, I don't know what, why uh, we were missing one other, but we were. But anyway, we had subs, we filled it in, we had everybody there. It was a good time. So I didn't win any skins, didn't win any close to the pins, didn't do any of that jazz, but uh, but I had a good time playing. Um, yeah, just wedge wise, I, I just didn't, I didn't, you know, it's one of those things where it, it, it's kind of those like touch and feel shots and all that, and and just getting, just getting used to hitting the ball off the off the grass and and having different lies and things like that. And I just I, I didn't hit hit it well. I mean, I I had a couple different wedges in the bag, of course, because I wanted to kind of mess around with a few things, so I didn't have the usual suspects in there. But it was you know just one of those things where around the green, I just. I got away with a couple things. Uh, I do have to say, I'm not going to do a review on it today yet, but I will get into uh, the Cleveland RTX 6s, but I do have to say I hit a couple very low in the face, uh, very thin, and they checked up pretty hard. So I'm, I was pretty impressed that uh, I, I hit a couple that I, I just I didn't think they would even stay on the green, and, and thankfully one had kind of a little bit of a backstop, and it, you know you could see it kind of grab and then use the backstop and came back a little. And then uh, another one, same thing, I just kind of hit it thin, and it hit, kind of checked. Uh, and kept it on the back of the green, so <clears throat> it was uh, it was uh, it was interesting. And off the tee, I hit it great. I really did. I hit. Uh, I mean, I, like usual at uh, St. Clair Shores, it's a short. Uh, the front nine, especially, is just uh, it's short. There's not a lot of opera, you know, not a lot of places I have to hit. Well, I wouldn't even say have to hit driver. You just don't hit driver if you're, uh, you know, if if you hit it long enough. And I was hitting uh, the paradigm, uh, Cowboy paradigm uh, hybrid off the uh, off the tee, hitting it really well. I think I hit a bunch of, you know, if I didn't hit the fairway, I was just off. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, a pretty good day striping it off the tee. Uh, the irons I had off the tee were, were all in the fairway, all, you know, hit those well. And then it just came to those second shots. And I just, uh, you know, most shots there hitting, you know, long irons and hybrids and stuff off the tee. You still have short irons or wedges into some greens and just never got any of them close. So on the third hole... The third hole's got this tiered green, so the back is stepped. It's got this big old slope that runs right through the middle of it, and the pin was kind of back a little bit. And you know, I lasered it. It was like one, I don't know, it was one hundred one or something like that. Maybe it was yeah, maybe it was a little more than that. But we had the wind behind us, and I hit just a crispy, 
gap wedge, uh, my MG3 gap wedge, and just hit that thing. It hit on top, and I was like, this is going to be perfect, just right at the pin. I was trying to, you know, the wind was kind of behind us to the, you know, blowing uh, uh, right to left. Hit it there, kind of hit, bounced. I was like, all right, great. Like, I'm going to be perfect. And then hits, checks, spins back down the hill all the way to the front of the green. And I had, you know, a big roller coaster of a putt that, uh, that ended up three putting because, uh, I just didn't putt well. And I do have to say, I, I'm not going to, you know, the putting was not good, but I'm not actually gonna, not going to blame that, that Odyssey, uh, try hot 5k number seven with the crank hosel was, was honestly pretty good. When I got to the putting green, I was actually making putts and leaving, you know, putting the ball right next to the hole. I was actually rolling it pretty good. I just got out on the course and I think just got timid and just couldn't trust, uh, couldn't trust the lines, couldn't stay with it. And I either got really tentative uh, with some of those putts, or I just got too almost too aggressive. Uh, I had a, uh, I'll get into it a little bit because it, it it involves one of the clubs I'm reviewing. But I mean, I had an an, an, uh, an e- what I thought was an easy birdie putt, hit it way too hard, lifted it out, uh, and then I had uh, you know a par putt that was similar, uh, you know, earlier in the round. So it wasn't even like I was putting so bad, like the ball wasn't anywhere near the hole. Like I was lipping stuff out, leaving stuff just short. I mean, or just, you know, around the hole. It was just, I, I couldn't get anything to fall. And, and like I said, I was not close anytime. I was not hitting it stiff, <laughs> whether it was a chip shot, you know, whether it was a little wedge shot around the green, whether it was a full iron shot, I just, I wasn't hitting it close. So it was a little rough, a little rough there, <laughs> but uh, it was great to get out. It was fun. We had a good time, uh, you know, as I said, it was super nice out. Uh, it got a little chilly at the very end when the sun went down. I was in the last group, and it got a little chilly uh, playing, you know, like the end of 8 into 9, uh, you know, the sun going down, a little darker, lost some of that, that sunlight to warm you up, and it was getting a little chillier, but it wasn't bad at all. Um, rock the old Moto Caddy M7 remote again, the electric uh, push cart I've got. Still absolutely love that thing. It's still so much fun to play with. It's so great just to like, you know, walk down the fairway and, you know, just, just walk. Uh, but it was a good time. And, uh, and yeah, so I shot 41, only three pars, the rest all bogeys. And I just, uh, the one was really good though. I do have to say the, the number seven is a par three. I think it was playing 166, something like that. 166, six, 167. And the wind was kind of coming straight across, uh, even maybe a hair into us at that point, uh, as you kind of make the outside loop around the course. And I had a terrible, uh, I think it was like a six iron or something like that. I had a terrible six iron. Um, it was one of those, I really should have hit five. I had six in my hand. I didn't want to walk back to my car to change it. So I just figured, you know, I'll hit the six a little harder, and which you know, never works out well, ever. Didn't work out with this time. Hit it kind of thin heel kind of flares off uh, into the right and basically on the other side of the, it hits on the other side of the cart path. So I was short right of the, um, right of the green uh, by a decent ways. And I, so my, my wedge shot was going to have to be up over the trap, uh, carry it onto the green. And I, I wouldn't say it was short sided, but you know, the green kind of, it kind of triangulates towards the front. There's a little section of fairway that runs up huge bunker on the right. So it tends to pinch in uh, up there. And the pin, the pin was kind of set right where it was starts to pinch in. So it was, it was middle of the green, slightly forward, but it was right where it starts to pinch in. So it just wasn't like a super easy shot in a sense. Like it just wasn't. Uh, and I had that, uh, Adele 60 P grind. And again, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do uh, Adele irons and, and wedges next week. Uh, but had just, you know, a little like, you know, had to flop it over there, hope it spun enough, uh, out of the rough and get it to, you know, stop somewhat close. And hit a great shot up over the bunker onto there and landed it. And I think I was just a couple feet for par, made par there. One of the few putts I made. And it was just, uh, that that was one of the, the really bright side. I think I made par on, on six before it, which is the par four. And that one, I kind of hit a I hit an iron or hit a wedge thin, ripped it all the way to the back of the green, hit a good putt down. And then I wouldn't say I tapped in, had a couple feet for par, made that, made a great up and down on, uh, on seven and then uh eight <clears throat> was just kind of a i mean i i played it pretty much perfect i just couldn't make a butt i lipped out the birdie putt and ended up making par um and then nine i hit just a pretty i i, I didn't hit a terrible hybrid i didn't hit it good i hit it you know high off the toe and i just hit it right and on the right there's like two sets of bunkers and i knew as soon as i hit it i wasn't going to clear that second bunker it just there's no way walked up in the bunker um hit a little fat out of the bunker, came short of the green, garbage chip, made made bogey there as well. So, um, 
yeah, it was just one of those getting getting the touch back. And I, I think this week, uh, today, I'm going to record this Wednesday night, but today, this week, I'm going to get over there. Uh, <clears throat> I usually get there a little bit early because I usually have two putters, <laughs> I'm, you know, messing around, hitting, hitting putts. I think this week I'm going to... Uh, you know, get there early and, and not putt as much and just try to uh, try to hit some wedge shots, try to chip the ball a little bit, get a little feel for the turf interaction, get the hands, you know, getting into the turf and stuff like that and try to hit some more hit some more wedge shots. And I'm still kind of finalizing the bag uh, for today. I know I, I, I kind of agonize over it. And actually what just happened was today or yesterday, I uh, uh, so Tuesday, I was uh, went into the office doing some stuff, came home, it was crappy, rainy day. I get home. There's a box that's the club box just soaked on my <laughs> front porch, uh, and I walk over. I grab it, and inside there, new PXG zero three one zero three one seven CBs, and they look really good. Uh, I was out there today. Uh, if you if you follow me on Instagram at Club Junkie Pod, you can see I was I was doing my Q and A, uh, and then also I was hitting balls out in my backyard uh, into my net, and uh, I had to go hit those, and and I was hitting the seven iron really good. So I, I I'm excited to I, I think I'm gonna take those. I was gonna take the Vegas out because those are kind of the the gamer irons at the moment, but I think the 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 CBs are going out uh, with me. So I've got four through gap wedge. So I don't think I'm gonna bring the four is not coming. The four <laughs> four is gonna be replaced. I'm going with uh, uh, I'm going with uh, either the I crossover or the Cobra. Uh, the Cobra I hit. Hit pretty good. I only hit it twice, but man, I, I striped it on on four, just right down the left side of the fairway, crushed it. Uh, had a great shot there, and then uh, hit a totally skanky, almost hosley nine iron uh, right of the green. So I do have to say I'm pretty sure I uh, was happy to have the Ping I two thirties. I think I got away with some shots that that I think going with like a you know even the Vegas, even you know some of the other ones, the Cobra King tours. Any of those kind of bladeish uh, irons that I've gotten, the kind of the arsenal, I think would have been uh, been, been a struggle. I think I would have uh, had some worse shots with those. I think those I two thirties really helped me get away with some stuff that that I just wasn't going to get away with. Um, other than that, so overall, overall good day. I'm happy with it. I'll take it. Uh, I think it was the third lowest round of the of the day. Two guys shot 38, and then me at 41. So <clears throat> one of the 38s, my brother, who just like nonchalantly like walked out of the <laughs> clubhouse. I was I was walking in because again I was in the last group walking in. Him and another friend of ours were walking out of the the restaurant and just you know stop talk whatever and we were chatting and then all of a sudden I was like, oh how'd you shoot? He's like just you know oh 38. I was like what the okay, like I think that's the best round, uh, one of the better rounds you shot uh, in the league uh, in the past two years. But he played well. So yeah, it was uh, it was a good day, had fun, and uh, you know it, it, like, it was it was frustrating but decent at the same time. So I'm gonna call it a purgatory round. Uh, I, I try to you know 40 and under is what I aim for in every round, and I feel like you know I, I had one little you know if I have one putt kind of lip in or, or like you know one of those lip outs go in, I, I'm there. If I make any of the sh- kind of shorter putts that I missed, I'm, I'm I'm in there. So and I'm and I'm gonna give that that Odyssey uh, that that try hot. Uh, that front try out five getting another run because I don't really love the size of it when I look down at it. I just it's the big seven, you know, it, and you just see so much of the putter below the hosel. So where the, the the plumber's neck hosel goes in, there's just so much putter between that and like your feet. I just don't like the look of it. It's just you know it, it frames the ball decently, you know, in terms of the alignment aid. I like the single sight line on top. I like the kind of the fangs. They frame the ball well. Uh, and the field on it's really, really solid. I mean, I know not everybody's a big fan of insert putters, and, and that's fine. I've, I've always been a fan of Odyssey White Hot. I think it's a good feeling, uh, a softer feeling putter that still offers some good, you know, good uh, good responsiveness, and I think the distance control on it's, you know, decent. So I've liked them, uh, and that one just has almost a little more firmer, solid feel, even with that soft kind of, you know, click at impact. It's, it's a little more solid. And it just actually, I, I, so... Instead of cutting it down, so that thing had a stroke lab shaft. They always send, you know, a, a, a standard putter is like 35 inches. I don't play a 35 inch putter because I'm 5'9 and I have super short legs. So I don't play a, I play a 33 inch putter. So instead of a lot of these putters, instead of cutting them down and putting a new grip on it, whatever, I just I yank, so I yank the shaft out of that one and put a new shaft in it. Uh, so it played 33. And because I have a handful of, uh, of, of shafts out of, you know, plumber's neck type uh, uh, putters and basically just put in the one that made it 33 inches and, and off I went. So it was <laughs> easy to do. 
And once I moved it down to that and I, my arms kind of fell into position, it, it really does, man, it feels good through the stroke. It, it really does. It, it, it feels really well balanced to feel like it's got, you know, it is really stable and, you know, just a, a lot of good things going for it. So it, it, it'll definitely get a few more runs. But, uh, yeah, so this week I'm thinking I'm going to go PXG CB irons, the 317 CBs, the new ones. I'm going to put those in. Um, I'm going to do TaylorMade Stealth 2 uh, Hybrid. Uh, there, I think I'm going to go I cross over the ping for the 4-iron. Um, 3 wood, it's kind of coming down to am I going to go Stealth 2 Plus or TSR 2. I might throw the TSR 2 in there because I haven't played that in a, in a little while. Uh, driver, maybe, I don't know, maybe Aerojet. Uh, we might go Aerojet with that uh, this time. Uh, we'll see. It'll be either Aerojet, um, maybe TSR2. I haven't played that head in a while, and I was, hit, again, hitting in the net and, and today, and it, it was just really solid. I, I kind of forget how good that head is with all the new kind of flashy things. So it'll be kind of one of those. That'll, that'll be kind of a game-time decision. Uh, wedges. Uh, I don't know. I, I might go to the old the old trusties. I might throw the old MG threes in all all three of them and uh, and see. Uh, I do have. We'll see. Uh, we'll do that. Maybe I'll throw the RT sixes in again just to kind of uh, go again and give it another run. But that and then putter wise, I don't know. I mean, I, the only reason so I'm, I'm I, I still consider the Betonardi the BB eight wide my the BB eight W or BB eight wide. My gamer, the only reason I didn't throw it in, and I know this is kind of stupid, but whatever, I just figured if I was going to have a bad putting day my first day out, why not put a putter that I don't care that much about? Because I don't want to lose confidence in the gamer. So I want to keep that to when I'm putting a little better, I'll move it into the rotation. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll bring that, uh, or I might throw in the... Uh, I could throw in the Mez. I could throw in the, the Lab Mez. I mean, that thing's a, a great putter, and I, I made a lot of putts with that thing. I could throw that in. Um, I didn't break out the Seymour, uh, last time I had it in the bag or I had it in my truck. Uh, but I got out there on the putting green and I felt really good with the, the try hot. So I kept that, uh, but the, the Seymour was in the, in, in my truck ready to go if it was needed. So I could roll with the Seymour, uh, or I, I did put a new, I did put one of those, uh, Zenergy, uh, grips. I think it's a, what is it? Uh, is it a, it's a 2.0. Jeez. I can't remember what, what grip it is. It might be, a Maybe just a, is it a Flatso 2.0? I don't know. But I've got a, uh, with a new Zenergy grip on there and the all-in shaft from UST. I've got that rolling. And that was a putter I kind of struggled with. And it seems like with that grip and shaft, I've been putting a little better with it. Uh, it just, when I set it down, it, it's it's the it's the, the band in three. And it's got that little slant neck. It's, it looks like a number seven with a little slant neck. And it just, it's one of those, again, it just always looks a little shut. So, uh, but we'll see. I'm gonna. I'm, I might. Uh, I might go with the Seymour and the Mez. Bring both of those. See which one uh, gets into the bag. And then, uh, yeah, driver. That so driver will be the one that's kind of up in the air. So I think. Uh, uh, let's call it. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna bring the uh, the the TSR two. I'm gonna bring that for uh, the three wood. Driver is gonna be up in the air between Aerojet, Stealth two plus, and TSR two. Putter is gonna be Mez and uh, and Seymour. Irons, the CBs, wedges. I think maybe I go with the same wedge. Maybe I go uh, the the same ones I did last time. Maybe I go, uh, you know, with the, with the Clevelands again. Uh, I do have the Cleveland sixty, the RTX uh, six hundred and sixty. Uh, so maybe I throw both those in the bag with. Uh, maybe I throw a different gap wedge in. Maybe I throw uh, my old SM eight uh, gap wedge in there or something like that. So we'll go with those. Uh, that'll be the the set. Uh, ball wise. Um, I don't know. I played Pro V1X and I really liked it. I hit it really well. So maybe I just keep rolling the Pro V1X. I, I basically, I, I brought one sleeve and I had a couple of the balls in the bag. I mean, I didn't bring, I bring more than that because I'm, I'm concerned with how many I potentially could lose. And I'm one of those guys who I know this is going to sound childish and stupid and whatever. If I have a really bad couple holes of the ball, I just toss it in the water and I move on to a new ball. And at the end of the round, I was kind of, you know, I, I missed, you know, didn't, Put it, whatever. That probably one X, which it did catch car path once, so it was scuffed, and uh, I tossed that bad boy in the lake. So I did lose one ball, but I've got two more in there. So I'll probably rock those. But that is uh, probably what I'm going to game uh, this week. Hopefully the weather stays good. It's supposed to. I'll keep checking. It's supposed to be decent, so let's hope it uh, it stays uh, stays good. And, uh, yeah, so today 
talk a little bit about uh, a couple clubs. So the first one, I know that uh, everybody's been kind of hitting me up about, asking me about. There's a ton of questions about it. It is the new TaylorMade BR NR or burner mini driver. <laughs> so this is TaylorMade is the uh, latest edition of the burner or the mini driver. They've made a handful of versions. I know our own uh, Andrew Tursky over uh, me and him do a, a podcast called TG2. If you, you probably do know about it, but if you don't, um, but the mini driver has always been a fan favorite of his. I have not been as wooed by the mini driver uh, as he has so but this one here it came in and i was like well we're definitely going to hit some shots with it and, and see how it goes so i did uh i've hit it on the range i was hitting it in my net today and i took it out on the course and i, I played it there and you know I, I don't love giving reviews on stuff that get like nine holes and that's it but this is one of those ones that so many people have been asking me about that uh that i think i gotta like jump into it kind of earlier than i would love and also it's not i feel like this is kind of a niche club that it's not going to fit in every person's bag, and, and I just don't think it is going to fit in mine. So it's not going to fit in mine. I don't think there's a place for it. I could see, the, the one place is, the more I thought about it, the more I kind of put it together. If I put together kind of like a half bag, you know, a half set, uh, I think this could be my driver slash three wood, and then I would go straight to like a seven wood or, or something like that. So I could see this going in the bag in a, in a very interesting situation. Or the other way would be, you know, because I did hit it pretty good, um, would be driver goes absolutely south, and it doesn't matter which one I put in the bag. They're all just brutal, and you need something off the tee that you're going to be able to hit straight, you're going to be able to hit consistent, and you're going to be able to hit it decent ways. Uh, this thing here may, you know, possibly could go in the bag in that situation. So... For a lot of players, though, I mean, this thing's big. It's 304 cc's, so it's it's pretty decent size. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people ask, how does it compare to Titleist TSR2 Plus? And the TSR2 Plus, to me, is a slightly larger fairway wood. You know, this is a mini driver. And the difference being, the face on this is substantially, well, the whole head is substantially larger, but the face is substantially deeper um, than a TSR2 plus to me, a TSR2 plus is just a slightly bigger fairwood. And I, I can hit that. Like I feel comfortable when I was out at TPI hitting that club, I felt comfortable dropping a ball down, hitting it off the turf. And I didn't even really think, think twice about it. It was just a, a bigger looking three wood. This, when I hit it off the turf, um, I definitely, there, there's more concern or more thought to it, you know, of, you better not miss. There's not as much, uh, you know, you got to hit it a little more perfect or you're going to catch it really low on the face and things like that. So there's there's definitely more thoughts. And and, and part of, a lot of that's me. I don't hit fairway woods great off the deck. Seven woods excluded. I typically can hit a seven wood. But a three wood is not a club that I typically hit off the deck unless it's a par five that I just, there's really not a lot of trouble around it. You can knock the ball up there and either hit it into, you know, you'll either roll up onto the green or maybe roll into a trap and that's it. And you're, you're done. You know, that's it. I'm not going to hit it where I've got to carry some water or, you know, other, any other type of hazard, something like that. It's just not a club I'm going to do that with. For me, a, a three wood is typically off the tee and I like it to go a certain distance <clears throat> and be done because a lot of the courses I play, again, when I'm hitting three wood off the tee, they're kind of placement shots like they're they're i'm purposely not hitting driver because there's trouble at driver distance uh or you know the accuracy side so when i hit driver off the off the tee it, it is you know i only wanted to go x far or whatever you know and for me i think that that shot off the tee if i absolutely perfectly nuke it whatever is like 235 done over like that that's like including roll all that it's like 235 and uh you know this thing is Definitely longer than that. And the other thing is that the burner is, it only comes in two lofts, 11 and a half, 13 and a half, a three wood for me. I, I typically look at 15s. Uh, I've even got, a, you know, 15s that, you know, I, I've looked at 16s for high launches, whatever. I typically don't, you know, I've, I've hit a couple 13 degree three woods. I can hit them off the tee. I cannot hit them off the deck. They just, they go, you know, knee high and that's it. So Taylor, when they sent these in, they sent us an 11 and a half degree head, which... 
I was a little bummed about it. I really wanted to try 13, 13 and a half degree head. I felt like that would kind of fit my game a little better. But, you know, either one, I feel like, you know, we're still kind of testing this thing and seeing. And it's probably not something that's going to fit in my bag either loft. But I've got the 11 and a half one, so it's the, the much stronger one. Um, off the I, I, the first thing I have to say is, one, it's super cool looking. It's You, you can't see it here, and it's fine because I'm in a basement with some artificial lighting. But the crown has this like brownish copper uh, uh, carbon fiber weave to it, which looks really awesome. The top, the Aliminade, is the old school uh, tailor-made T, the round one, which just looks cool, and it's done in copper. Super retro. The face kind of has the, the T logo on it as well. And then the sole... Again, it has that copper and black, and it's got the sole that kind of looks like the old burner uh, driver. Uh, and then the shaft that comes in its stock is a UST Pro Force Gold 65 that's painted copper and black. Uh, now, it does have the MX or M40X logo on it, so it looks like it's kind of a, a UST uh, a Pro Force Gold, but with some updated material <clears throat> with that M40X. Uh, they sent it to us in a regular flex, so I didn't even hit the shaft, so I couldn't tell you. How it plays or anything like that. Um, I guess I could have taken a few swings with it, but it uh, it came that way. And uh, the stock length on it is forty three and forty three and three quarters inches. So forty three seventy five is the stock length that it comes with. I uh, somebody said it's the it's the same uh, shaft with the bottom bore number uh, is is taller on this than a fairway wood. But if you stick a three wood shaft in there, it plays at forty three seventy five. I did put a different shaft in here. I had a uh, a Nippon Reggio Formula B plus uh, that I had a seventy five X that I had in a three wood that I you know had a three wood shaft laying around. Pulled the tip, you know, put a tip on a tailor made tip on it, put it in here, and it seemed to be pretty similar. Like I think it's a touch shorter because uh, I play my three woods usually just a little bit short. So I think it was you know mine was probably forty three and either a half or forty three and a quarter. Uh, so it was probably you know a quarter to a half inch shorter than stock, but um, the 65 gram regular flex was not something I was looking to really uh, jump into. Overall, love the look. I think it's awesome. I think it's really cool. Uh, I think a lot of people kind of surprised titanium face instead of carbon, but this is something that TaylorMade even came out and said the sole design on it is basically built for hitting it off the deck. So if you're going to hit this thing off the deck, uh, the K sole, uh, as they call it on here, which is kind of a reverse K. Um, is built for turf interaction. So as it gets onto the turf, helps glide through, and you can hit it off the deck. So it is designed to do that. And the 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 first thing hitting it, and I can tell you, is the first few shots I hit on it. Love the sound and feel. <laughs> it's super muted. It's got just like a little bit of a ting to it from that titanium face, uh, but it's really quiet. It really kind of feels powerful and sound. But it sounds great. Feels great. You really feel the ball. Uh, you know, when you hit it dead, you know, hit it center, it really kind of compresses and jumps off there and just feels like it's super hot, but the sound of it's great, really shocked at how quiet it was. I, I was expecting much, much louder, uh, than it was really quiet, really great sound, really great feel. And, you know, no matter whether you're hitting it off the deck, hitting it off the, t uh, the T it just sounded awesome. And the more I was pounding balls into my net today, it just kind of reinforced it that, you know, the sound and feel on this thing was really, really good. Re I, I really enjoyed it. I think they, they nailed the sound and feel on this thing. Um, I'll, try to, I'll say there's two weights at the bottom. Heavier weight, lighter weight, depending on the move of them. You can, you know, switch the heavy weight forward, take some of the spin off, maybe flatten the launch it to touch, move it all the way back for, you know, maximum forgiveness as well as uh, adding a little launch to it. So I didn't even move it forward because it's an 11.5 degree head. I kept it all in the way in the back because... I just, I, I'm not going to need a lower launch on this thing. Uh, but hitting it off the tee, great. Uh, I, I hit it off the tee a uh, handful of times. I uh, hit it a, a, a handful of times, uh, not only into my net and all that, which I was pounding balls for a while because I kind of got into a groove with it. It was pretty sweet. Uh, and then also out on the course, hit it a couple times out there and hit some really good shots with it. It, it really does go. It's, it's, it's long. Uh, is it driver long? Eh, I mean, it's, Probably not too far off. I mean, it, it, for me at least, I mean, I play 10-5 drivers, so an 11-5 is not that big of a deal. And I've played 11-degree drivers before. So this thing is uh, is right there. But in the shorter length, you really can not just rip it off the tee, and it goes pretty darn straight. I would say it is probably uh, 85%, if not 90% of, of driver length uh, off the tee. It goes a long way. 
and it doesn't spin a ton, or at least it doesn't for me. I don't hit it super high, even for 11 and a half degree head. I don't launch it that high. Uh, and the shots I hit on the course were kind of flatter than I expected, even off the tee. Off the tee, I thought I was going to be able to kind of get it up in the air and kind of hit it high and let it fly. Uh, and, and I did hit it pretty flat. It, it wasn't coming out crazy high. Uh, I would say maybe a little lower than my 10 and a half degree driver. You know, I, I had the, uh, <clears throat> that day I had the, the Cirques on the, uh, the ZX5 LS, which I'll I actually talk about a little later, but this was actually going lower than that, uh, just in terms of, of overall ball flight. But I mean, just hitting bullets out there, uh, again, of a niche club, if you could, you know, fit this in where, Hey, I'm playing on a windy day, whatever, put this in the bag, hit some low bullets out there. It really does, uh, go and, and forgiveness wise, it seems to be pretty decent. I mean, I actually swung it pretty well and hit it pretty solid. So I wasn't hitting it all over the twist face. Like I, I could be known to do, but it went pretty darn straight. It seemed pretty darn forgiving, and it seemed like even when you did miss it a little heel or a little high toe, the ball just kind of stayed straight. It didn't have a ton of curve to it. Uh, it just went pretty straight. I mean, now is it as forgiving as a 460cc head? I don't know. I I, I kind of doubt it. Uh, you know, if you put two and two together and, you know, you both smacked one high toe, I, I'm probably sure you're going to see a little bit more, more draw to that with the burner than you are, say, a Stealth 2. Um, but for its size, 300 cc's, all that, I think it is pretty easy to hit. Uh, the big question with it, which I've been asked a bunch of times, is how does it go off the deck? And that's the one where <laughs> I did hit it off the deck. Uh, I hit it uh, on the course, uh, and then I hit it on uh, on the uh, like off my mat as well. On the course, the only reason I hit it, so on eight, I hit an okay drive. Uh, I didn't hit an amazing, but I hit an okay drive. Ball's on the left side, sitting in the rough, and it's actually kind of sitting up a little bit. So I was like two, man, I was probably, I didn't really even laser it because I was like, I'm, I'm at least like 240 away or something like that. You know, I'm like 240 away off the deck. I'm like, you know, who knows where this thing's going to go. On eight, the whole left side is OB. It's all people's backyards. So I was like, well, let's let's give it a whirl. I've been, you know, I made a ton of bogeys today, so what's the point? And I hit a, I hit it stupid dead center. Uh, I mean, maybe just a hair low of the of the actual center dot that's in this thing. Um, hit a dead center flush. Ball just goes. Has a little you know tight little draw to it. And as it's going, uh, it hits the rough because uh, like yeah, the the way the hole is is the 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 fairway kind of kind of leaks off to the right and then it comes back to the left up to the green and there's two big traps on the left hand side before the green one of them's probably like 30 40 yards behind the in front of the green or something like that and then the next one is, is next to it and it's probably about 10 yards in front of the green so there's two there and the rough kind of bows out and it hit it little draw into the rough hits rolls onto the front of the green so i'm on in two and it was Again, when I first hit it, it was low. It came out. It didn't go very high. I was like, there's no, I mean, it's just going to roll up in front, which I'm fine with. Like, that's great. And the firepower this thing packs, it actually made it up to, up to and onto the green. So I had an eagle putt that I misread, left it about two feet left, hit it whole high, and then uh, lipped out that two footer. So, <laughs> that two footer and made par. But, uh, but no, I mean, it really, really impressive how, how powerful those things. Now, you know, finding spots in bags, I think if you're a really, you know, they, they've been kind of showing that guys on tour have been hitting a little bit, all that. If you're a really high ball hitter, I think the 11.5, I, I mean, I haven't hit the 13.5. The 11.5 definitely can bring some ball flight down. It's going to go forever. And I think for players, like I was talking to Tursky, and he was talking about it. For him, he's so long that he doesn't, I mean, three wood for him is not, a really usable club. If he, He's either ripping driver and trying to hit it down there as far as he can, or he's probably playing an iron off the tee. Like, he's probably not pulling three wood because three wood is going to go is you know well beyond what, like, my driver is or, you know, as long, if not longer, than my driver and stuff like that. So for him, three wood doesn't really make sense. And again, as he said, off the deck, he's long enough where most of the time, um, you know, a driving iron or something like that will get him to the green if he needs it. And in that rare time when you're that far that he needs a three wood it better be that perfect shot where there's just not a ton of trouble around so he for him uh you know this would basically be set up as that driver 
And then just set up different than his driver. So he'd have the driver set up, hit it high, long, maybe hits a draw with it, and maybe you set this up to try to hit, you know, set it super flat, he'd try to hit fades with it, and try to, you know, set it up as a different club. And then also he can hit it off the deck because he hits it high enough, generates enough club head speed, we're getting it up in the air, even, in, you know, even... I would think he would go 13-5, but even the 11-5, I think he could get up in the air with uh, with very little problem. Uh, but for you know a guy like him, who this would basically become a second driver uh, out there, it you know it, it makes a little more sense. Uh, you know for 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 the players who who you know would fit to, I think it fits perfectly. Uh, for me, it would fit into you know a half set. I think players looking for a half set, throw a burner in there, perfect. I think that would be great. Uh, and I think players who are stronger players who don't really utilize the three wood. They just their games. They carry enough distance at the top end of the bag with the three wood just isn't that usable. This could be that alternative. You know, have to hit the fairway type thing. It's a little bit shorter than driver, but you're not giving up a ton of distance. Uh, or maybe you can set this up to hit a little draw where your driver fades or vice versa. Uh, but I think it's that kind of specialty club for for certain players. And then also, you know, there there is a, a case to be made that you know the center of gravity of this thing is closer in to the shaft than uh you know a full size driver so uh it is easier to you know for some people it's easier to square up it's easier to turn it over uh, i thought it was easy to square up i never really thought it had a problem with going left or anything like that i didn't hit it hit it left too much uh definitely on that on the course on the range eh, maybe a little bit but that's again my swing so i think there is advantages for some players who you know turning over a 460 cc driver can be you know tough for them or whatever th- this may find a spot because you can you know, goes about as long as driver uh, in terms of distance, and it just is a, a little tighter. So, again, love the sound and feel. Uh, it's amazing. I think the distance is great on it. I think the forgiveness is pretty darn solid. I just don't know where it would be in my bag. The 13.5, maybe that fits in my bag a little better. Maybe I could put that in as a 3-wood instead of my regular 3-wood, turn it up a little notch or whatever. Um, but, you know, that we would have to see. So this one I did turn up a notch. I turned up one click uh, higher lofted. Uh, when I did play it, so it was really playing there. And just quickly, I'll give you a few numbers as I was kind of hitting my net uh, after I played with it. Uh, but carry uh, was 224. Again, I just it was more, I think, it wasn't so much the ball speed and stuff, it was more height. But 224 carry on average. Uh, and like I said, you know, like I usually say, I don't delete, like, poor shots. You know, if I hit it off the toe and it only carries, you know, 200 yards, I'm going to leave that shot in. Now if I completely shank it or top it, like, I'm going to take that out. That doesn't happen that often, but uh, 224 carry, uh, spin 2824, uh, and that was with uh, basically the title is AVX, which is a little smaller or a little lower spinning ball, but that's what I was hitting out of my, uh, that's what's kind of in my shag bag, that and a couple other things, uh, but mostly uh, some AVX stuff. Um, <clears throat> 2824 spin, ball speed of 142.4, which uh, was pretty quick. I thought uh, it had a great smash factor. Uh, club head speed on average of 97.3. Uh, and again, this was at 43 and a half, 43 and a quarter uh, inches long. So, you know, a slightly longer three wood. Uh, smash factor 146. Uh, I mean, I was striping it pretty good. I mean, I was hitting it pretty solid. Uh, launch at 12.5. Uh, so I wasn't hitting it super high. Even the stuff that I would hit kind of straight to slightly right just wasn't super high in the air. Uh, and, in, and a pretty flat apex at 76 feet. So those are the numbers on the burner for me. Uh, and that, again, was with a Nippon Regio uh, Formula B, plus, which is. Kind of a mid-low launch shaft. Uh, it, it, it's kind of modeled after the, the Modus Tour 120. So uh, 75X in there. So it was a, a great club, a good piece. I know a lot of you guys are going to go out and hit it. Uh, hitting it off the deck for me, a little difficult, but it definitely can be done. It didn't actually feel that weird uh, hitting it off the deck, which was kind of interesting. So the TaylorMade Burner. Uh, if you go to TaylorMadeGolf.com, it's probably right on the front page because it's kind of the newest club. So you can go ahead and check out the Burner. But it's probably worth trying. It's kind of cool and kind of fun. So why not uh, Why not give it a whirl? Uh, and then we'll jump into the uh, you know a, the driver that uh, that a lot of people have been asking about and the one that I played. Uh, I've been hitting this a good amount at the range and then one I played uh, finally got into the course. And again, I hate going just nine holes, but I feel like with the amount of range time and all that that I've put into it, uh, we can definitely talk about it, but, uh, the Strixon ZX5, uh, driver, and this is the LS, so the ZX5 Mark II LS, um, which is kind of interesting, it's a lot to say, I mean, I love that Strixon kind of went with this, like, Mark II thing, but it's also kind of a, it's kind of a little bit of a pain to kind of say, so this is a ZX5 
LS Mark II. <laughs> so the LS version, meaning low spin, and the big difference between the standard uh, ZX-5, which is this here, is you see the movable weight is all the way back. Movable weight on the LS is pushed all the way forward. And basically what they're trying to make is a club that is not only forgiving, but also a little bit lower spinning. So the LS, if you uh, you know look on the Strixon site, the LS is supposed to be the lowest of the three drivers. There's also a ZX-7 Mark II. The ZX-7's got a little more compact shape uh, when you look at it from the top, uh, and it's built as kind of the, uh, as they call it, the workable driver, the driver that, uh, you know, if you want to walk up and hit draws and fades, and or you know, draws, fades, hit it high, hit it low, all that, uh, you can do that. Um, but this one here, the fives are meant to be a little more forgiving and the LS to be low spinning. So you're also going to give up a little bit of forgiveness, uh, on the, uh, on the five, uh, LS because that weight is shifted, uh, shifted more forward, but both really good driving. I really, all three, uh, are, are really good drivers. I think these are going to be kind of sleeper heads. And when you get, you know, fit yourself or get fit into the right one, I think these things could really, uh, really hold up. I mean, I thought the ball speed on these when I first started hitting them, uh, early in the year were really, really good. The one knock I will give it, um, I, they're a little loud. I feel like the sound wise, they're, they're a little sound. Now they're definitely powerful. Uh, the responsiveness is good when you do miss it a little off the, the heel toe, whatever you're going to know, it's going to make a slightly different sound. You're going to feel a little bit more vibration, but center strikes are really good. Uh, the face does feel kind of, you know, soft, which is, uh, which is nice. Uh, the, the ZX5, I don't know if you can see here on, uh, on YouTube, but yeah, you know, some of the ball marks there, some of the T marks, I was hitting it pretty good. Uh, but hit this, got it on the course. Um, only hit it twice uh, out there, so uh, unfortunately not a ton, but hit a ton of balls uh, with it on the range over the past couple months, as well as uh, today as well. And my net just trying to uh, kind of you know add numbers together. But um, the ZX series, uh, I, I thought that last year's was really really good. I thought they made a really good driver, uh, and it was excited for this year because I know uh, you know Brooks and a few other guys started playing these things. And I think a lot of this, uh, you know, especially the 5 LS was kind of brought in because of of Kepka and, you know, him switching out, playing a tailor-made driver late in the, the year last year and, and then moving back to this or moving into a, a ZX-5 uh, LS. But, um, but, yeah, overall, really, really solid drivers and, and, and big-time sleepers. I like the shape. I Not not everybody does. They're, they're a little more bubbly. Uh, you know, the ZX-7, again, is going to be a little more compact, a little shorter from, uh, you know, from front to back and, and from heel to toe uh, then the five and it's also a slight bit more rounded it's not as kind of stretched out near the back but all of them there uh, are, are looking pretty good the face depth on them, the seven is is a little bit deeper uh, and it should be uh, the the second lowest spinning as as they say and as you can see the weights on this it's got dual movable weights so you can Put the heavy weight in the draw position, fade position, and if you stick this thing in the fade position, it is a fade bias driver. So, uh, for people who are looking for a fade bias head, Strixon does have you covered with the ZX7 Mark II, which is pretty cool. Um, but these things are really, really good. I think the five, the five LS is the one that when I, as soon as I saw it, I kind of like that was the one I kind of gravitated to. Uh, I like just like the fact that it was, you know, still forgiving, but still low spin, and, you know, it's going to be pretty neutral uh, ball flight. Um, and it, it just overall was, was a really good look. And when I first hit it, I was actually hitting it, it in the Paradigm at the same time out at the, uh, the Dome over at C.J. Barrymore's in the winter. And the first thing I did is, I mean, I was hitting the Paradigms. I was really excited about those. I was hitting them well, and I, I thought they were really good. And then I think the first shot with the, the Mark V LS or the, ZX5 LS Mark II. Uh, I think I hit that thing just, I mean, dead square on the screws and looked back and saw the ball speed numbers and I was like, wow, like that's right up there with the paradigm. It was really, really good. So um, that was what had me kind of impressed and that's why I, I brought it out, you know, uh, last week to go play with it. Uh, and I've been hitting it a, a good amount on the range just because I've, I've really liked, uh, you know, really like kind of what I saw initially and, and wanted to see. So I think these ones here, if you could go and just maybe shoot just like two grams of hot melt in there maybe play it like a half inch shorter well maybe a couple more grams than that but if you played it like a half inch shorter shot a couple grams of hot melt in there kind of on the sole you know I, I think these things would be really 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 good so 
honestly, uh, the seven I've kind of hit the least. The seven always is kind of that one that, uh, you know, being workable, uh, you lose some of that forgiveness on it, and that it always kind of it kind of deters me from going down that road, uh, just because I, I I usually need some help. You know, I like how and I and I like looking down at you know a slightly bigger driver head kind of gives me a little more confidence that you know you can hit it anywhere on the face and still get away with uh, with, with, with with that shot so out of these here um you know the fives uh, definitely are more forgiving uh now the zx5 the, the interesting the standard zx5 not the ls the standard one is listed on their site as kind of a straight to slight draw model and honestly it, i mean it it doesn't really feel like it draws much more than the LS. Uh, they're, they're really similar so for me, uh, and I was kind of hitting, especially today, hitting them all with. Uh, um, I was doing the Project X Hazardous Black Fourth Gen. Uh, when I went out and played uh, the other day, I play or last week I played with a in the ZX5 LS. I played a Matori XF3 uh, 6X because I just I had that shafted up already and. Uh, you know, went and played these things. So, uh, the fives, it's interesting. I think, I think both are pretty neutral. I mean, they, they say this, the, the standard five is, you know, slightly draw bias. I, I usually like I'll hit the, the paradigm versus paradigm X. And usually the, like the X, I could tell you could turn it over a lot easier. It was just, it wanted to turn over. You, it wanted to release an impact. I, I felt like the fives were both really similar. Uh, I mean, now during the swing, the LS just kind of felt more comfortable. Uh, and it kind of felt, like that was the one I swung the best, uh, and and I think maybe it has to do with kind of that that CG being slightly forward. The CG, as much as it does affect, you know, forgiveness and and all that launch spin, it also can affect how that the club you know feels through the swing. And and the LS just kind of felt the most comfortable uh, out of the three to me. But the five, I, I definitely didn't think it was a, a draw type head. I mean, I think all three of these are, w- would be. You know, you could play by a, a, a scratch or better golfer all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, a higher handicap. But, you know, the five uh, being probably the most forgiving. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the shots off uh, uh, that missed held ball speed really well. I mean, that's, you know, and the same thing, like, with every driver. I think the, the big thing with drivers this year is consistent spin. You know, no matter where you hit it on the face, the spin number doesn't go crazy. It doesn't go crazy high, doesn't go crazy low, and that variation in spin just is uh, is, is super tight. Um, overall, I think the ZX7 is, is the least forgiving. I felt like when I missed it on that one, you know, you could see kind of the ball speed uh, drop a little more than the other two. Now the face isn't as wide from heel to toe. It's, it's a little shorter, but it is deeper. Uh, and I, but I felt like those misses, you know, maybe dropped a little more ball speed than uh, the other two. But, uh, yeah, really impressed with the, the, the ZX5 L, LLS uh, out on the course. Again, hitting it out there, you know, I didn't put the best swing on it on, on hole eight. Still went out a long ways. I was kind of surprised how far up it was. Uh, I thought for sure I'd be further back just because I caught it a little high toe. It had a little draw to it. Ended up in the rough, and, and it ended up being farther down. And then ended up having a shot with the burner to get it on the green in two. And it was, it was pretty impressive there. Uh, and then, uh, I think I hit it on, what other hole did I hit it on? Did I hit it on nine? Was I kind of, no, hot nine hit hybrid. Uh, I think I hit it on, I thought I hit it on one other hole. So, but either way, uh, out on the ra- out on the range and, you know, today hitting in the backyard, just a really consistent driver. It, it's pretty darn stable. Toe shots don't go super hard left. They don't just dive left. They do hold some altitude. They do hold some spin. Uh, and, and they don't go as hard left as some of the drivers, especially some of like the low spin player drivers. They, they, they definitely crash hard, you know, can crash hard left or right when you really miss it. This thing stays pretty stable and it, it stays uh, where, where it should. And it, it kind of does help you out a little bit uh, with those shots. Um, the five, again, very, you know, very stable, very straight. Uh, I guess if you had to say which one had the most, you know, a little bit of left, Yes, I guess like my landing area with with all these drivers a little bit left to target, but that's just all the way always the way it is. Um, but forgiveness wise, they're both pretty pretty similar. Uh, you're just looking at basically a little more spin with the uh, with the five and then the seven. Um, you know, in terms of fade, I, I didn't really notice it was fade. I mean, it probably had the least amount of left in it. Uh, you know, the starting line was probably just a hair more right, but. It, it doesn't, you know, for me, it wasn't like one of those things where it just took away the left side. I mean, it's it's probably a little bit fade bias, but it's not anything that's crazy. And I do have the heavy weight in the fade position because, you know, I just, I get, you know, my miss is 
over the top, shut face, come down on it steep, and it's it's going left. So uh, the seven is is pretty good, but you know as I said before, it probably does lose the most ball speed on the miss hits. So uh, I'll get into some quick numbers with him because I know the show's been going on for forever, and a lot of you are probably just like, man, I need I, I should have turned this off a while ago, but. Um, yeah, so carry number, uh, the ZX-5 was actually the shortest for me uh, at, at, you know, 226 carry. And again, I know that number isn't, like, crazy impressive. I'm not, like, carrying a 300. Uh, and also there's some shots in there that, you know, weren't absolutely amazing uh, with all three of these. But carry, uh, ZX-5 came in third, 226, followed by ZX-7 at 231, and then the ZX-5 LS at 233. And honestly, the the, the best drug balls between the, the 5 LS and the ZX-7 were really, really close. I mean, within yard, if not the same distance, uh, you know, the, those balls were 240 plus when I hit them really solid and they were both really, really similar. So, um, you know, I, I just think that you lose a little more with the seven on those, those slight misses, uh, spin number ZX five spun the most. I mean, they're all again, really close though. Uh, 3147, uh, was the average uh, on the five followed by the ZX-7 at 3066, and then the ZX-5 LS at 2946. So with those all, I mean, you know, pretty close. Uh, I mean, the, the, the 5 had the highest variation, you know, or, or highest kind of variation of spin, you know, looking from the highest to the lowest. Uh, and then, the, again, the 5 and the 7 were pretty darn close. Uh, and I think it's just a little more draw out of the LS or a little bit more left out of it. it takes a little bit of that spin off, but both really, really close. Uh, ball speed on uh, ZX5 141.6 on the ZX5. Uh, for whatever reason, I just I wasn't hitting the center as much with that as the other two. And then the the five LS and the seven are almost identical. One four one four four point one for the ZX5 LS. One four four zero for the ZX7. So all pretty darn close. Um, you know, the the five and the seven, I definitely hit more solid. Like if you looked at the faces and you looked at the bottom where the T marks are, all that. I was just hitting them center better with those two than the standard five. Uh, Clubhead speed for all was was pretty common. I mean, the average across the board, 99.6 with the ZX-5, 99.9 with the, with the ZX-5 LS, and the ZX-7 came in at 101 and a half. So swinging the ZX-7 the fastest, which was uh, which was pretty interesting. It didn't feel that way. You know, when you're swinging them, I just I felt the most most comfortable with the ZX-5 LS. I did not feel as comfortable with the seven, but I was. You know, average, on average, swinging it faster. Uh, smash factor on the on them the Z, the 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 LS one four four. I was just I was hitting the center really easily with that club. Uh, followed by the ZX five at one four three, and then uh, ZX seven at one four two. And as I said, kind of for like the third time, you know, the misses you you just saw the drop in ball speed a little bit more with the seven. Uh, launch angle. <clears throat> ZX5 LS was actually the, the higher launcher for me at one at 14.0, uh, followed by the ZX7 at 13.3, and then the ZX5 at 11.6. And and I will say the the, the ZX5 was right around uh, the standard five was very similar to the five except for basically like, like two shots that brought that down. I hit two kind of really low heel had launches like five six degrees, you know, five point six degrees. Uh, they were super low. One, I think it was one was five six and one was, you know, six point two or something like that. They were really low, and they kind of brought a little bit of that average down, <clears throat> where I didn't have any of those shots with the the LS and the seven. So, a um, little bit skewed when you go back and look. It, it's it's right up there with the other ones. It's still a little bit lower for me. Uh, you know, probably closer to that thirteen number when you start kind of going through all the shots. But kind of two of those really really kind of brought it down. And then the apex number again, uh, ZX5 or ZX5 LS at 100 feet, ZX7 at 98 feet, and the standard five at 86. So all pretty close, uh, all, all all pretty good, and and honestly, really solid performing drivers. I think Strixon, you know, these Strixon drivers are, are for sure the best ones they've ever made. Like there's, there, I don't think there's any question about it. Now I haven't hit every one of them, but I've had to hit the last two generations before this, you know, last year's and the year before. Pretty solid. These ones, uh, definitely, definitely better. So that 5LS is definitely going to get to the course some more with me. Um, and we'll see about the 7. Maybe it goes out. The 5, again, I didn't hit as men, as, as great, but uh, the, the LS is, will for sure uh, go out. I'll hit a few more balls with that, uh, and then we'll see about the, the 7. Maybe we'll go uh, try some shots of that bad boy. But um, all three really, really solid. If you go to 
Google Strix on its website because they do this whole thing where like they're now kind of with Dunlop and it's like US Dunlop that whatever like just Google Strix on golf and go check out the stuff there uh, for each of them. Uh, but you know they kind of go into the the rebound frame stuff where the frame kind of flexes along with the face. And, you know you can check out all kind of the tech there and then also uh, uh, the specs on uh, on those those uh, those drivers in terms of lofts and all that that are uh, that are offered. But, uh, but really solid. Um, the other thing, too, is I like that they don't go crazy long, like 42 and a quarter or 45 and a quarter is, st- is stock length. So that's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, and, um, yeah, but overall, really, really solid. I think if you're somebody out there looking for something a little bit different to try in, in the driver space, I think the ZX series from Strixon is definitely worth uh, taking a look at. I think they're, they're going to be underrated. They're going to be a little bit of sleepers. And, you know, when people walk into a store, they may not uh, be – Looking for a Strixon driver, they may be looking to buy one of the bigger names, but uh, you know, four ninety nine, save yourself a little bit of money as well. Uh, but but really high quality stuff for for the price. So check out the Strixon ZX uh, Mark II drivers, really really solid. So that's all I've got today. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you tuning in. I know this episode went a while, uh, went went long, but uh, uh, anyway, excited to play today. We'll let you know how that goes tomorrow, and then uh, who knows? Turski may hit me up about it uh, tomorrow after the if we record tomorrow after uh, after I play. So, if you're following me uh, here uh, on or listening on whatever podcast platform you are, please like, subscribe, whatever, all that stuff that you can do. Truly appreciate it. Uh, same thing with YouTube. If you're watching on there, if you can like, subscribe to the whole WRX Radio channel, it's awesome. It helps our you know algorithm helps us grow all that jazz. And I know it's like corny to ask and everything, but it is, you know, it is what it is. And if you're uh, not, please follow me on Instagram at Club Junkie Pod. I know uh, it's fun chatting golf with you guys and doing little Q and A's and all that stuff. It's uh, it's always fun. So hope you guys have a great week, uh, rest of the week. Hope you have a good weekend. Get out, play some golf, and uh, we'll go back at it again next week. <laughs>